G'day, 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 everyone. We are live. Welcome, welcome. That was a huge announcement. That was over two hours. That was, um, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Please let me know if you can see and hear me. Um, um, it is 4.15 a.m. here in Sydney, Australia. Actually flying out to NAB this afternoon. So I'm going to be doing last minute packing and then coming out to hopefully meet and see some of you. Thanks to see not in sync. Okay, that's uh, let's try and sort that out. Um, is that a bit better? Check, check, check. Hello, hello, hello. Just added 100 milliseconds. If anyone out there knows how much I need to add, let me know. Better? Cool. Thank you very much. Wow, that was that was something. <laughs> um, so I've got um, Doug on the call as well. He is uh, just going for a bathroom break because, quite frankly, that was a very long stream. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll bring him in soon. But uh, let me know what you are thinking. A little bit more. All right, I'll a little bit more. Apologies for this. I'm running in OBS for this stream because it's just easier, quite frankly. I know that's probably illegal if I'm doing a black magic stream talking about OBS, but uh, <laughs> yes, we see the, uh, there's gonna be a lot of a lot of people happy about a lot of different things, but um, yeah, I think I'll, once Doug's up and running, we'll, we'll get started and going through some of the things, but I've got a huge list of items to go through and <laughs> this is, this is gonna be fun. So, let me know in the chat what you are mostly interested in. <coughs> Sorry about that. So I've just got uh, Doug on my ears. He's just gone live on his channel as well. So what we're going to do is actually combine all our chats together so that we can see what people are seeing. This is going to be a lot of fun. So Doug, if you can hear me, I'm ready to go. So when you're ready. Just reading through some of your comments. This is going to be a, a lot of fun. So actually, let's bring up. Yeah, let's let's do it, Doug. If you if you got me, let's um bring it up. Welcome to the stream. I'm well, I'm well, how are you? Excellent. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just talk a little bit, just make sure everyone can hear on your side. Um, everyone on my side, just making sure you can hear Doug. Okay, can't hear Doug, apologies. Uh, I can hear you. Let me just make sure that we've got. Today. And Ryan, you do have set up for comments for us, right? Correct. So, um, okay. All right. Everyone, my stream, I think we've now got Doug coming in. Great. Check, check, check. Audio check. Beautiful. And everyone on the Doug stream, you can hear me as well. Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Seems to be. Um, let's see. Get to. I should get to the proper YouTube dashboard so I can view comments in live in real time here. Yep. So you got the social stream thing. So we should have both of them. Okay. My volume is a bit lower than Doug's. I will bring. Okay. There we go. Yep. We got uh, we got comments Doug's coming in. A little bit lower. Hey, this is what we do here. This is this is all live. Let's let's just make it up as we go. <laughs> That's right. But you have, you have to get, you guys have to keep in mind that Ryan got up in what one a.m. something like that in order uh, just, to watch the stream. So. Yeah, it's it's been a long morning. Yeah, so so we intentionally didn't take a lot of time to get prepped for this. <laughs> uh, just allow him to get some sleep, especially before 
he goes on the road to make it to NAB. So it's going to be great to see you there at NAB again. Uh, twice, two years in a row. Likewise. <laughs> That's I'm pretty, really pretty crazy. Can yeah. So I'm not, always shocked when someone from your part of the world makes it all the way over here. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Especially after this announcement, this is going to be quite something. Uh, I've just boosted my volume a little bit on my mic. Let me know if that's any better. Sounding good. Sounds good on this end. So awesome. Um, we're, we are going to have a few sync issues with audio coming from Ryan on my end. Um, I'm using Zoom ISO on a Mac to pull in his feed and bring it into my switcher. It's fighting me today. So we're kind of lucky to have anything at all. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we'll deal with a little bit of low frame rate and a little bit of delayed audio just so we don't have to <laughs> reboot that thing one more time. That's but, a good uh, point. Someone just anyways, said that uh, the audio in the, the stream from Blackmagic was out of sync. So Yes, it was. You know, we're doing it just was. as well, basically. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So what do you think overall, Ryan? And this Gosh. is pretty uh, pretty exciting. It's exceptionally exciting. There's so many things here. Like there's a few more things I would have wanted to see, but I actually I I kind of want to bring up my my guests list of uh, things that I thought might come. So I, I wrote down before <laughs> the announcement going, okay, let's, let's see if I can guess what's going to come out. And I got a few of them. Okay. So I wrote a 2110 okay. switcher. Yeah. Didn't get that, but uh -huh. we did uh -huh. get kind of a 2110 router. Kind of? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah. And 4K 2110 stuff. So we got a bunch of that. A 12K mm -hmm. full frame sensor. Uh, I did write down mm -hmm. an 8K broadcast camera, which we didn't get, which I'm a little bit did disappointed about, but that's all right. <laughs> Obviously, new Resolve. Thought we might see like a HD 16 or a 4K 16, but didn't get those. Um, yeah, I wrote down like a Micro Studio camera 6K, didn't get that. Uh, a Decklink Duo and a Terranex. We still haven't seen one of those yet. I'm quite shocked about that. Um, a SDI HDMI multi-verter router kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. 4K scaling re output and follow focus motors, but yeah, didn't see any, didn't see a few of those things. But I got a couple, so that's uh... a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think that they covered most of the stuff that I was anticipating, except a new live camera. I, mm. I was expecting we'd we get something in that in that arena, uh, just because it's we've got the studio cameras, but they're they're not for high end stuff. They're just not, and they've Blackmagic is kind of. I don't know. I wouldn't say they necessarily stepped away, but they've certainly not paid much attention to that arena the last few years. So I mean, we used to have the Ursa 4K that was a halfway decent live camera, mm. but they, they haven't done much in that in that world for quite a while. So, but uh, 2110 all over the place. <laughs> a lot of 2110 stuff for sure. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Uh, are you going to be? Do we just start well, from the beginning <laughs> of the announcement or like? Yeah, let's just just go in order of what they announced. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you took notes. I, I didn't notice you were taking notes I, as I we went, but I did. Mashing away, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Like the first thing they announced was something that I'm actually very excited about: the new 120 input video hub. Uh huh. <laughs> I was planning on getting the 80. I might not be planning on getting the 80 anymore. I might just go straight for the 120. I know that seems crazy, but here in my trailer, I currently have two 40 by 40s, and they are both more than full. So yep. I, I, I can easily use an, at least an 80 by 80, if not a 120 by 120. I'm so, probably in the same boat. I would, I would definitely consider it. And it's not a huge price bump as well, which I'm... No, it's really not. So the, the other one's like, the other one's like 995, I believe. And this one's 12995. So, so $3,000 extra to get 50% more inputs and outputs. And the interesting thing about switchers is the complexity grows uh, almost, in, well, it's, it's a squared relationship. So you add, if you double the number of inputs and outputs, you have four times as many connections internally. So going from 80 to 120, um, that's 1.5 each way. That's actually just slightly over double, like 225% as many and many cross points internally. So it's surprising that the price is only $3,000 more. I mean, there's a good chance that so, in the 80 by 80, it's probably got the horsepower to run more. It's just a case of having yeah. more holes and slots to do so. so. Most certainly they were designing both of them at the same time and they just couldn't get the manufacturing on this new one arranged ahead of time. So I would many guess. 12G ports. So, that's a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, but I love the fact that the the boards with the SDI connections are actually uh, replaceable. So if you have a, a port go out, you can just replace the board instead of the whole the whole thing. So that was a problem with their older smart video hub products. Uh, yeah. I had I had a, an older one that one of the ports went out and nothing I could do about it besides replace the whole thing. So just the way it goes. I mean, it is a little bit annoying so. that to have that replaced, you do have to pull the whole thing apart because it's still a right. blank. It's not like a card style setup, which it's, I was thought, I mean, that, that definitely would add more cost to do it as a card style thing, but I'm just thinking if you do need to repair it, you get to unplug everything, okay. ship it all off and all that kind of stuff. So I'll get you on the right input here. Let's see. If only you had a 120 by 120, uh, you'd be able to do this so easily. <laughs> I know, seriously. So <laughs> yeah, I, uh, <laughs> it'd be it'd super, super nice. Yeah. Having only having the 40 by 40 means I have to do some really awkward routing sometimes. And that includes, uh, especially when I'm using something like a zoom ISO where it's not actually part of my rack. So I have to plug it into a, a, a um, what do you call it? A patch panel. Yeah. Right. I have to plug it into a patch panel just to get the signals in and out. And yep. that has to go through two routers in order to get to my switcher. So yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, okay, I think I that's, think... A, that's, that's already a huge thing. Um, I was yeah. kind so of first, hoping first big one. That... Sorry. You go. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was you. kind of hoping that we would potentially see a new router with a whole bunch of 100 gig connectors. Cause I was thinking 2110 was probably going to be a release. Um, now we have yeah. obviously seen the eight by with the hundred connection. So potentially you can link a couple mm -hmm. of them into a, a bigger core switch, but yeah. Cause right. Yeah. I was kind of picturing that there might be a empty ATEM, but I think what they're kind of picturing now is going, let's just get the sources and the destinations into 2110. Um, and I guess we're kind of moving into that now. And then we can um, SDI those into a, <laughs> into a constellation or something. So, Right, right. So, so okay, the next thing they, they announced was the three, uh, two new ATEMs. Um, do you want to, we should probably just cover those real quick because yeah, they, they kind of don't fit in with everything else. I need to get those out of the way. And, yeah. Um, so a little bit surprising because um, last year at NAB, one of their reps hinted to me that they probably would never come out with 2ME or 1ME 4K switchers. But yet yeah, here they are. So they announced the 2ME Constellation 4K and a 1ME Constellation 4K, which uh, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I very likely will be replacing the one that's in my fly pack. And because um, you've got a 2ME maybe... HD at the moment, don't you? I do. Yeah. And my fly pack is a 2 HD and I, I love that thing. I use it all the time. I've got three events going on this weekend where I'm going to be using it. Mm. Um, uh, it's, it's, I use it more than my trailer, honestly, cause it's just, it's portable and there's a lot of situations where my trailer just doesn't make sense. Uh, so I use it a lot and it's been great. I've loved it, but having a 4k version of that, is going to be pretty nice. Yeah. So look forward to that. I mean, price wise as well. So it's three, seven, nine, five for the two ME mm -hmm. and eight, nine, nine, five for the four ME. So it's definitely a big price jump. Although for me personally, mm -hmm. I absolutely love having the Maddie on. So I've got the AK constellation and the Maddie has been right. so good because I can just route it into my audio console and it just, it just works. That's, that's been a huge right. thing for me. So I don't know if I actually ever would get a two ME purely from that point of view, because I don't have to, um, <laughs> Uh, I, I wouldn't have those audio things because I have to spend more money on getting audio done elsewhere. So I guess definitely got its place. A lot of that, but a lot of that is a, the approach you take. And apparently, you bring in a lot of audio sources over SDI. Whereas personally, I do everything over Dante, mm -hmm. so I don't even use the audio coming in on SDI on my on my equipment. So the from, yeah. and from for my situation, Maddie is not a, an enticing feature. <laughs> so yeah, I just. Different approaches, but but there are certain situations where it would be really nice. Like for example, Hyperdex for video playback, since they don't have any audio outputs on any of the Hyperdex, bringing in those Reason via is. Maddie through for a four ME switcher, <laughs> yeah, four ME switcher uh, would be nice. But no, it's all priority. It's all about different workflows. Exactly. So, but I, I totally get where you're coming from. Like the the Maddie functionality is definitely very cool. Unfortunately, not available on these new these new 4K models. So there's not room for it. There's too many, there's too many connectors on the back. That's true. So as it is, yeah. But uh, it's interesting that they're doing that. And I also find it interesting that the price points on those things line up with the 4ME and 2ME HD models. Exactly. So the 2ME 4K is the same price as the 4ME HD and the 1ME 
4K is the same price as the 2 ME really? HD. So, yeah, yeah. I thought that was rather interesting that they went that direction. So, hang on, sorry, I'm just looking at the the website now. So, because hmm? the so the 1 ME 4K is 17. Um, nine five, one of me HD is nine nine five. Mm -hmm. The four K. Sorry, did you say they're the same price? Or... No, the four K is the same price as the lower tier HD model. Because I'm seeing so the two ME four K, thirty seven ninety five, and the four ME HD just has been thirty seven ninety five in the past. Maybe oh, the sorry, okay. sorry, I'm close. I'm close. Okay, I understand what you're saying now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very close. So yeah. That... Anyway. Very but it kind of goes to show just how much how much more processing is required for 4K. It's actually four times the processing instead of yeah. double, like people tend to think. But uh, yeah, so you got four times as much data you gotta 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 handle when you're going to 4K. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I'm glad those are coming out. I'm, I'm excited about that. Those should be available now, which in black ma black magic terms means that now, but for most of us, a month from now, if if that. So. That's where that where sort of you know, tends to go. Mm, exactly. Okay. All right. Um, one, one other interesting thing. Uh, they've had a hole in their lineup with the with the panels, the advanced panels. Uh, they're yes. starting over thirty one hundred dollars for the one ME that they've had in the past. They announced a new one today. It's called ATEM Micro Panel. Uh, instead of connecting to Ethernet like all the other ones, this actually connects over USB C. Uh, and it goes to your computer, Bluetooth or USB-C actually, it goes to your computer and uses ATEM software control on the computer for the communication with the switcher. So you do have to have a computer with that. So that's uh, an interesting, interesting approach, but it does bring the, the price way down. Yeah. So it's six, nine, six, seven, five instead of the $3,100. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty amazing. That and even had Bluetooth and bat yeah, it has a battery built in as well. Yeah. So like that's- Yeah, yeah, it does. Yep. So you can cool use it without it on the desk somewhere. <laughs> without any cables. Yep, exactly. So it looks like it's more or less similar form factor to the ATEM Mini Extreme. It looks at least, yeah, it's I at mean, least close. Well, it actually could just be the chop out from the um, like the old television studio. Actually, no, it's, it's slightly different. Um, like the, the yeah, the, the button layout's definitely different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, like obviously it's not the full T panel, but again, they're just trying to save, save on cost there mm -hmm. and having yeah, the four yeah, so in, buttons in, as well. Great. No LCD screens. That's a huge price, price uh, saver right so. there. Yeah. Um, I, I guess from a connections point of view as well. So when you, like, especially on the ATEM minis, I think you have like four connections you can use. So mm -hmm. since you've already Depends got- Depends on the model, but yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you've already got a laptop plugged in. So why not? Mm -hmm use that connection to remote control that. Right. So Piggyback. it's actually very smart. Yeah. I would not be surprised if at some point we see a firmware update that allows you to plug the USB-C directly into the switcher. Interesting. So, yeah. No, it's... He didn't mention that, so I don't think it's supported out of the gate, but I would not be, be shocked to see that happen at some point. So you don't have to have a computer at all. So... That would we'll be see. cool. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be very cool. It's like having to set up a computer uh, can be... A little bit of a hassle. Like ever since I got my two ME panel, um, I've just realized how much extra hassle that's been having a computer set up for an ATEM. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just don't need it. So yeah. Anyway, interesting. But so I was like saying, saying, I wonder if that can be used alongside the um, oh, for original sure. panel. But yeah, it's just yeah for sure jumping into ATEM. Yeah. So you could definitely use it as another yep. thing somewhere. Yeah, Black Magic allows you to use multiple panels simultaneously. So there's no reason that that would not work. Mm. So yeah. yep. Very cool. Grant's saying that I'm considering getting the, the smaller panel for smaller scale geeks. Like it makes total sense. Something you can just throw on your back. Oh yeah. Um, like you say, I've got the two of me panel as well, and that's a huge case. And having mm -hmm. something like this, because you know we do international flights and stuff, and we don't need the, the big panel. That right. Makes yeah. yeah very very sense. often when I'm I'm doing a kind of a smaller gig, my my case for my two me panel it takes up half the volume of everything. <laughs> so throw in that that the the uh, fly, fly, my fly pack and a couple of cameras and you know like the the two me case is literally half of the overall volume of everything that I'm taking for that kind of an event. So it's a hassle sometimes. Yep. <laughs> and I've just got my case just under the flight limit as well. So it's thirty one point <laughs> nice. nine kilos. So yeah. it just gets it. I had to like. 
get some foam out of there to make it get in the way. What, what did you uh, use for a case? Um, I found a, a, a row case, which was made for an audio console, but it just happened to have the right dimensions. So I actually managed to get the foam <laughs> into that. So it actually has the right cutouts and I just sandwiched it all together. So I, I think it's for like a, um, Alan Heath console or something, but it just, Okay. Well, Interesting. Right yeah. Works well. Yeah. I, I found a Pelican case, which was just big enough to hold the foam that comes yep. from uh, with the shipping nice. when, the, when, the, when you buy the two OME panel shipped. So I had to throw in one inch of foam on the front and in the back in order to make it fit snug. But yeah, yep. it uh, yep. worked, out, worked out perfect. So probably too big to fly with, but I don't really intend to fly with that thing. So <laughs> yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. I, I, I can say no. from experience. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, super exciting that they're coming out with that little tiny micro panel. That's I'm definitely gonna be picking one of those up because there's a lot of gigs that I do where that will do the job. More than so, saying finally we have a slider for the A10 minis. It's true. That's right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So okay, that's so when after that they got into the twenty one ten stuff and boy oh boy did they announce a lot of things here. Uh so first of all, are you gonna be doing anything with twenty one ten? That's a great question. I I need to figure out, I'd love to try it, but you, you really want to go all in if you're going to do it because right. it's a, I guess in a way you could almost look at this and go, do you get a router or mm. do you get a whole bunch of converters? And I'd be curious to do the math on it and see how many ins and outs you can do for both of those options because I don't necessarily know if you would want to do a router and a whole bunch of 2110. So say um, we've got the 8x12, for example. Um, you need a bunch of them to get into the Constellation, for example. But mm -hmm. then everything's kind of in IP land. That acts as your router. So I don't I don't know. I, <laughs> it would definitely be more expensive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how about yourself? What are you thinking? Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit, uh, mm. cause I, I traditionally I've been very in with the, the fiber stuff that they've had, uh, and that's worked great for me, but they've always, 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 always had this limitation that their camera converter product is only is HD only. It doesn't do 4k. It's the only piece of my entire trailer setup. That's not 4k is those camera converters, but they've introduced a product now, which can take, take the place of that. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can reuse all the fiber cable infrastructure that I have that will just work mm. uh, for fiber for, for this uh, 2110 stuff. And so what I would be doing is I'd be replacing my studio converters, which, you know, each one takes four fiber connections and gives me four SDI outputs and four SDI uh, or well, one channel of SDI return, but the four cameras. And they have basically something that's more or less an exact analog of that with that IP converter 12 or four by 12 G product uh, and then they've got the other one which doesn't do provide power which is eight in one unit mm. which is not just an analog but an upgrade from from that so tough to say i mean, i think there's some potential there uh i hadn't planned on doing 2110 because you know they're uh they're four, they hadn't, didn't have 4k and doing 4k is tricky um with 2110 if you don't have like incredibly massive routers to do that well that, but that's with the compression that they're adding that uh, that does change the equation a little bit that definitely does change the game because the issue was obviously 12g is just beyond 10 so you just can't use a normal mm -hmm. sfp but right they have done it now i i kind of we were getting things set up so i, I missed what they were actually talking about how they've done that compression but um, yeah, he, he didn't cover it in much detail. Uh, yeah. Just basically said, we're adding some compression. It's just light compression. Um, it's not an industry standard compression, which is interesting. So it basically means if you, mm. if you use that feature, it's not going to work with other people's products. But they are publishing the spec in, with hope that other people will pick it up. We'll see. <laughs> We've seen yeah. this before where, you know, they, Black Magic Raw, you know, that's uh, not necessarily natively supported by many products outside the Black Magic world. But uh, there's, I mean, know, that's pretty standard things for, could happen. That's pretty standard for most cameras that their raw will just be their own little thing. But mm -hmm. yeah, one thing we didn't but hear one, about. But the was, point of twenty one ten is it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a standard where, that everybody works with, right? And it's interesting they're throwing their own variant into the mix that's not inherently compatible with other people's stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's. 
What were you going to say? Um, one thing we didn't hear about is clocking. Yeah. And how they plan... Because the, the original stuff we were talking earlier about, it was just kind of point to point and they just kind mm. of just sorted it out. But there's right. no mention about how they're doing that clocking between those different things. I, I think that's probably because the, the pace with all of this stuff was so fast. I mean, I, I was, <laughs> as he was announcing these products, I was literally writing as fast as I possibly could, and I still couldn't <laughs> even keep up <laughs> as he was going. Uh, so I think that's just a matter of uh, we have too many other products that we want to talk about today, so we just need to keep moving on. And But, you know, obviously 2110 needs to be needs to have a clock source uh, with their 2110 converter, converters that they introduced last year at NAB. They can act as a clock source when you need them to. Hmm. Um, so, but the other thing that they introduced today uh, was, what do they call it? Basically a switch. It's, I, guess, I guess it is a switch, a network switch that supports 2110. Um, yeah, what's that? That's, um... But they actually, did, yeah, they introduced their own switch uh, because there aren't a lot of affordable options in, in the world. Um, did we get a price for that switch as well? That was... I have to find it in my notes. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Because I'm just actually trying to find where that switch is. Because I'm under the IP. Converter, I, might, I, might not have, I might not have written down notes on it, but they definitely introduced one. Uh, uh, Morden says 2995 for that switch, which actually, for a switch with a whole bunch of 10 gig. I had 16 ports of 10 gig and 200 yes. gig ports, I think. Yes, that's correct. I know I wrote it down. I just don't, don't know. I'm not seeing where I where I wrote it down. Yeah. So oh, there's the Ethernet switch 360p. <laughs> that's what they call it. Yeah. So <laughs> what's with that yeah. naming? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Let's go back to pre-standard def definition res resolution references so we get the 360p going on. Yeah. I don't know where that comes from. That's that's really weird. But 16 ports of 10 gig and then two ports of 100 gig. Oh, you know what it is? It's 200 gigs mm. plus um, 16 10 gigs. So 360 gigs. Oh. That's what the... Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes more, a little more sense. But, but, it's, but why, why did not, they put the P why on Why not 360G? <laughs> yeah, why, why yeah, Exactly. <laughs> That's rather weird. So, is that not... Was that one not showing up on their website yet? Um, let's have a look. Switch. Oh, yeah, here we go. Ethernet switch. It's under, oh, it's, it's got its own thing now. Um, so yeah, 200 gigs, whole bunch of 16, no PoE. I mean, that's gonna be a lot of power to get that PoE, but. Yeah, no kidding. But it kind of, it kind of makes sense though, because there's not many, like this is not the kind of router you would use or switch would use in, in a normal network environment. This is purely no, a, not at all, not at all. This it, is just and it has some, just a, has some a routing table. routing capability, which is not something you're not going to get from another manufacturer either. So okay, because twenty one ten, the routing is done with something called NMOS, right? So yep. uh, this one supports NMOS, which is um, unique, and it has it has a. If, uh, do, you, do you want to bring it up, or do you want me to go to mine? So yeah, there, there you go. So yeah, it actually has an LCD screen and it has buttons on the front for doing for mm -hmm. doing the routing. So which you can actually great. route your route your your signals right from the switch. Which, hey, that's great. They I mean, they didn't have an NMOS solution until the announcements today. So which is interesting because they you know so, so their IP twenty IP converters that they introduced last year you could select the source directly from the screen, but they also had the decklink cards which supported IP. And there was no way to select sources with that, so you had to have a, had to have your own NMOS solution. So, uh, I'm glad they finally finally have that option. So, yeah, when I did when I tested the products back in December, I had to spin up my own NMOS uh, server basically in order to just to get video in into that that decklink card because they didn't have any other way to do it. So, and while I I, I think their their monitoring thing is kind of hilarious sometimes, it's actually quite nice to look at it and go what's breaking my network <laughs> and have right. a very clear visual <laughs> thing of going what's what's well, breaking and, my network. and have it be in, in, a, in a being accessible to people who aren't network network gurus right so yep. in most of the network switches that are out there you you have to basically have courses or training in, in networking in order to to do any kind of even basic management so yep. i'm sure this thing is going to be pre-configured to support to 
the IGMP snooping, and I, I bet it has a PTP clock source in it too. If I was a bet, if I was a gambling man, uh, there was no mention of it, but I would be surprised, kind of surprised if it didn't. Um, so, well, just you know, looking you, in the specs here now, because you, you you got my screen share, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is PTP V two. Doesn't necessarily it's got a clock source in there. Well, the other ones didn't either. Didn't say it either, but they but they had it. Yeah. <laughs> so the IP converters. So that's very yeah. interesting. It's something something we'll definitely have to ask ask them at NAB here in a few days. Yeah. So, stay tuned. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But I mean, since but since every twenty one ten network essentially has to have one. Yeah. Why why wouldn't they include that in that? Especially because that really is acting as a hub for for their. So someone's asking, um, Timo is asking, what would the 100 gig ports be used for? Now, if we, I think if we go back to the, the eight by one that had a 100 gig port on it, did it? I believe so. That's um, maybe one of those details that I didn't have enough time to write down. <laughs> Cause something, something to keep in mind, just for the, the viewers out there in in 2110, because this, this is all going to be multicast, isn't it? So it's going to go everywhere yeah. regardless of if it's actually tra traveling, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so... So at least it goes to the switch, whether it's going to any other destinations or not. But, but beyond that... I was wondering that, if you could stack these switches, but I don't know if there's going to be enough bandwidth to do so. Well, keep in mind, though, that since, uh, since uh, you're using IGMP, that only the video streams which are actually needed on a second connection actually tra traverse that, that connection. So, True. you know, if you're, if you're doing 10 connections there, uh, 10, 10 video streams, and each one's less than 10 gig, if say in 4K, and obviously in, in HD, each one's about three, or one and a half or three, depending on your resolution frame rate. But uh, so that would allow you to, to actually have quite a few of those uh, go over a 100 gigabit connection, but I, I would imagine that gig, that connection, one 100 gig connection, can be used for anything. So uh, just getting any any sort of traffic in or out of there. Totally. So, kind of now, general purpose. I feel like I saw there was another converter box which had a 100 gig port on it because this eight by one has eight SFP. It's, yeah, it's, it's individual ones, right? Yeah, that's right. Can you get uh, was, a 100 was it a gig cloud to store? SFP like multi SFP modules like a a, um, a DAC cable? I'm sure there's some way to do it. Because, um, yeah, potentially you could actually just go a bunch of these 10 gigs into a single 100 gig. Mm -hmm. In theory. Uh, it just depends on how they've, um, yeah. they've done that. Yeah, that, that's the big one, one of the big uh, holdups of moving to 2110. Like, you're not getting, you're not going to get 20 cameras on one connection, you know, for the most part. So, and mm -hmm. well, but 100 gigs sort of makes some of that. Some of that possible, even though it's insanely expensive at the moment. So, but this this new product makes it much more accessible than it's ever been before. Yeah, I don't know if you can buy any, buy a switch from anybody else that has hundred gig at that price. Yeah, exactly. So, that's um, because what was it? Yeah, two eight nine five with two hundred gigs, sixteen ten gigs, like two hundred plus. Yeah, sixteen. <laughs> yeah, that's and even just, just the, like the, like those buttons, like th these all add costs. Like those those buttons aren't yeah. cheap. Um, right. and the screen and the scroll, like it's actually really cheap for what yeah. they're, what they're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. The screen's cheap, but the knob is not and all the buttons are not. And so, <laughs> yeah, they're, that's, they're doing something pretty incredible with that. I, I suspect that this thing is being sold at, at cost or if not, maybe Probably. even below just as yeah, a loss leader. saying that hundred gig, gig can go into four 25 gigs or 10 gigs, not 10 or I guess eight, um, 10 gigs, which is. That's a shame, but that's fine. Well, there's always, there's always a way to do it. I mean, you can always create a lag. So, uh, yeah. Well, I guess that that's that's going to be the, the question is though, is how much in here is going to be adjustable? Like, can you set up right. aggregations and stuff like that? I don't know. Right. We'll have to yeah. ask those questions because that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll have that. So. Right. Yeah. I'm getting some flickering and I think I probably know what it is. So you go, you go ahead, you go ahead and move it. Right. Yeah. Move yeah. It on and I'll... Um, what? So let's have a look through the chat, just so I've kind of been keeping one eye on, on what people are saying. Um, the new 8x12G converter is essentially a new talkback converter paired with the bidirectional 2110. Yes, 100%. And More or less, yep. Those um, bidirects, I love that they've given the option of SFP or 
copper. Yes, for sure. That is for sure. a definite need. But really interesting yeah. having the talk back on there. That's a really... It's a... But you know what they're doing. This is the replacement for their older older uh, camera, camera converter product. Oh, totally. But yeah, like they're, they're not just locking things into... Um, using like just the Blackmagic cameras and stuff like that. So that's really... Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Now they this didn't is their talk... Answer. They didn't talk audio. No, but but as, uh, but twenty one ten, um, it's more or less AES sixty seven for audio, and you're able to freely route that as you will. I, 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 I one of these days, one of these days I'm going to do a proper video on twenty one ten and how it works. But yeah. essentially, with twenty one ten, each audio or video source is just a separate stream. And so even though you might have a camera that's providing video and audio, the video and audio are actually separate uh, essences, what they yes. call them. And you can subscribe to any essence you want from, uh, from anywhere. So I imagine that's what they're doing with this. They're basically saying, subscribe to your intercom audio for this, with this device instead of... And have they actually... Because we haven't actually seen that. Have they actually separated them or had the ability to separate them in what they've done here or... Are we not sure yet? Well, in 2110 doesn't inherently, so I would be shocked if they didn't Im implement that. I mean, it's, it's NMOS that's taking care of that, so uh, yep. I imagine it would just work. It should just work. And it, interesting, for those of us who use Dante, uh, there's supposed, supposed to be compatibility between uh, 2110 audio and Dante, uh, ways of, ways of accomplish that, accomplishing that. I think you have to use the uh, Dante uh, domain manager to, to, to do it, but there are ways of having that interact. So. Essentially, any camera that's providing 2110, there's a way to get that into a Dante system as well. So just inter inter interesting way that things are moving that yeah, way. That would be awesome. Yep. Um, presentation converter. Yeah, that, that's rather interesting. Um, this I'm is a problem not, I'm not that, about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's one of those problems that any, any of us who do uh, production for other companies run into with some regularity, you know, it's got somebody yeah. who's got a, a laptop and they need to do a presentation going into a, a projection system or LED wall or whatever. This is meant to be a single product to allow you to do everything that needs to be done <laughs> at the laptop and then some. Uh, so he th they throw in some extra functionality that I'm not sure I've ever even actually needed, but <laughs> but but there well, it is. So. I mean, looking at this, this is, in, in my opinion, brilliant. You got PoE++, so you can do it in one cable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um pc and that even powers the laptop too which by the way was exactly was cool because yeah it's yeah you, you just use one usb-c straight into mm -hmm. the laptop which will power it um so you mm -hmm. don't need to have a dongle hanging off the edge which is going to fail at some point um <laughs> of course and sdi and hdmi output on the stage as well as mic line in uh don't know if it has fans audio on. audio out as well and um, they didn't make, make any reference but again they flew past this thing this so fast that <laughs> um, we, we don't know everything that it offers. Yeah, it's got a phantom power in. So, in theory, you could drop a microphone on the lectern or something, with, which needs phantom power. And you got two channels of audio there. Um, now, have they fixed their latency? That's going to be the question. That is a big question. Uh, what kind of latency have you seen when you've, when you've played with this stuff? So I haven't actually played with the, the previous stuff, but I, okay. I watched um, Brandon's video. And I think he was yeah. doing about two to three frames on that round trip, yeah. which is a lot for it a non-compressed standard, which makes less sense. Right. And, and <laughs> I was definitely, definitely hoping when I played with it that I would be able to get that down because you know those converters actually have a reference out. Yep. So for example, I would take, I took a hyperdeck took the reference out of the 2110, put it into the reference in on the hyperdeck to make sure that it was in sync with all the stuff going on in 2110. And I was measuring two and a half frames of latency going over the network. So yeah. it's interesting to see. But again, I, don't have, I didn't have a proper uh, PTP time source either. Hmm. So I don't know how much that, that adjusts it. Uh, it was, I was just using the one that devices have built in. So, but yeah, that, that is a potential issue and that the latency with all of this stuff. I did see someone earlier saying that they would like to see a HDMI input to IP, um, which did I guess you one? kind of have with the presentation converter, uh, but yeah. not the not the not the mini converter. So and they announced the way, a twenty one ten to HDMI, but not the other way, I guess. Yeah, so they have IP. Um, I think it was. What's the bi What's the bi directional one do? 
Uh, just SDI. So SDI okay. bi-directional. Uh, so I guess the presentation converter is essentially their HDMI input, but it's obviously significantly more expensive to, to do that one. Well, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the bi-direct are, one, are SDI. I got it. Yep. Um, and they have, then they have the IP to, mini IP to HDMI. Two versions of that, SFP and Ethernet. And in theory, all these Hyperdeck original ones, uh, sorry, uh, Decklink ones would all work in this ecosystem as well, only in HD, but... Mm -hmm. um, right. But I guess we can also jump to anything else you can think of from those converters' point of view. Well, <laughs> I mean, there was quite a few products, and they, let's see, they also... Well, they also announced SmartView, which has a smart yes. 4K monitor, which has 2110, a new audio monitor, 12G, which has 2110, uh, a firmware update for the Studio Camera Pro, which is going to support 2110, a firmware update for the Simpty Fiber Converter, which supports 2110. Yep. Um, the Smart um, Video Hub Controller, whatever they call it, whatever the exact product name on, they're announced, they've got a firmware update for that, which supports NMOS. So you can do your routing with those. Um, but yeah, and then and actually from there, that's when they moved on to Resolve. And so that, yeah, they really, really did focus quite a bit of time on the 2110 stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they're I, very I think clearly all in. The, the other nice parts is the, the studio cameras, which have the 10 gig built in, mm -hmm. are going to be converted. So was it converted to 2110 on the camera or was it only through this, the... Um... Well, he said there's a firmware update for the camera, which would imply that it's being done at the camera, which, which it's not hard to do. 2110, the video yeah. on 20, uh, video on 2110 is by default un uncompressed. So it's all they're really doing is putting it in a different wrapper than what they have in the past. So no additional conversion necessary. Although with the 4K, I wonder if the their new, con new uh, con compression is going to be supported by that. Don't know. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be a question to ask. Now, I feel like I also the, said their... that the studio converter has been turned into an IP converter as well. So, right, but the question is whether that means you're getting 2110 video out of it because that Ethernet connection has historically been for connection to the camera, not for your, not to your network, right? Uh, historically, yes, but it is still just a 10 gig um, PoE++. Right. So in theory, that could go straight into your um, router. So you actually would have then two inputs and one output um, as a converter. Yeah, we and... don't know details. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just reading between the lines there. And also the, um, the yeah. Sempty converter, um, which I thought they abandoned. Um, <laughs> because, that we, because I'm pretty sure even on the, the back of this, because there was an ethernet trunk and there's an ethernet port on mm -hmm. the back of the thing as well mm -hmm. as on the camera. That was never turned right. on. It ne they never actually finished that. So right. they're, and now we're talking about, I'm guessing through the optical, I don't know if that, that Ethernet's 10 gig or not, but I'm guessing the optical, I don't know. Was that opt optical and SFP as well? I'm not too, sorry, SFP don't know. plus? Don't know. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was just a passing reference. He said they're doing a software update for the Simpy Fiber Converter yeah. to support 2110. That's all he said. So we don't know how they're doing that. Yeah, so. Uh, let's see, did that have a date on that? No, I didn't write down a date on that. I think the, I think those were coming for that in the studio converter. I think those updates were still coming. Yeah, I think uh, I'm still working on trying to make that work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you do. But along those same lines, um, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but the, the firmware update for the HyperDeck Extreme 8K to record 4K or four four streams. <laughs> that was. That's... I guess that's not uh, 21. That wasn't 2110 though, was it? Didn't say uh, anything about 2110. No. Yeah, which was yeah, interesting because so, yeah. they they've got ten gig built into them. I guess you could only mm -hmm. do one set of ten gig, but I always wondered well, why for, the AK for wasn't H HD though. <laughs> you can do four eight K or four HD. Uh, it's pretty easily over ten gig. Four HD with, with with their with their new compression. So. Yeah, or one one four K. But yeah, I always wondered why um, they didn't have four recordings at the same time or like. Right, because yeah, because every one of those ports is twelve gig yeah. SDI, right? So, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that makes total sense. And actually, from a price point of view, um, a single four K is three thousand, and the eight K is um, five thousand. So mm -hmm. it's actually cost effective to have. It's yeah, 
you get four for the price of one and a half or one and two thirds, right. which is <laughs> right. pretty good. Um, yeah. But the big thing for me was all of the Hyperdex now have IP recording or network mm -hmm. recording. Network recording, yep. yep. Um, because it used to be just the extremes and just the shuttle. <laughs> In the shuttle, <laughs> of, all, of, all the, of all the products. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was rather odd that the shuttle was the one that they'd selected. Because, <laughs> no. yeah, I've got a whole bunch of the HD pluses, and I've been wanting to be able to just pipe that straight into our NAS so that it's just ready to go. Right, um, right. But, yeah, I guess that almost leads us into the Resolve um, live replay. <laughs> I, yeah that was very interesting what, what did you because it, so it, so it seems like what's happening is they've got the um, hyperdex are recording they're recording straight to a NAS um, mm -hmm. I don't think they buffer necessarily through the SSD slash SD card because there was nothing in the front of the um, right. hyperdex on the device themselves so they're going straight to the NAS which I guess could have potential issues if your network's not up to scratch and you could start getting some weirdness there. Um, and essentially in Resolve, they were expanding files and very quickly expanding files. I noticed it was like every second or so it was expanding that size, mm -hmm. um, which is quite impressive. But um, yeah, what did you think about, oh, here we go. We've got a live replay section now. Let's see, yeah, there we go. So <laughs> I have to admit that I was only sort of half listening because I was troubleshooting our, our Zoom connection at this point. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, basically what they announced is Resolve is getting the ability to do instant replay, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, it makes sense too. I, I, well, for sure, yeah. I was kind of expecting a, a hardware panel to release, but I'm like... Well, they actually did. <laughs> well, it's in, like the processing is not happening on the hardware panel. Right, right, yeah. It, it's all being done on the computer. Yep. But uh, uh, one thing we don't know whether that was that's Mac only or whether that's supported on PC, because he started out with, when he introduced it by saying that the uh, M1, M2, M3 processors on the Mac have a lot of processing power that's been kind of untapped. You know, each one does a pro res, has a pro res encoder, multiple pro res encoders. And he, that's when he led right into this this instant replay stuff. Uh, so he didn't explicitly say whether it's something's actually going to work on Windows I mean, the, as well. The panel itself works on Windows. Um, right. But then again, it is just a normal edit panel. So, yeah. Um, with, with, yeah, it's with, with, a, with a, little, a few extra buttons and rearranged to make a little more sense for a replay workflow. But essentially, it's just a a panel for controlling the editor. Yeah, I'm just just skimming through the the thing to say if there's any um, anything about whether it's Windows or Mac because. And so, how they were doing the actual output was quite interesting. So it seems like. In his demo, he was using a. Uh, actually, no, sorry. He was, I think he was using the new. Um, the new, new Ultra Box, Studio. Uh, Ultra Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, 4K Mini. But also the um, the new replay. There's a new one. Yeah, what did they, they call that one? Too many names. Yeah, no kidding. Blackmagic um, Media Player 10G. That's what they call that. Media Player 10G. Yeah. Um, which is actually cheaper than the 4K Mini. Yeah, it is. By, by $50. <laughs> so that's, and it, does, um, and it seems, seems to do more. So, which is yeah. funny. I was actually just gonna, about ready to buy one of those. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I, do you think you'll go for this instead? Probably. Yeah. Because it does more. Yeah. Oh, having an SDI output for monitor. Brilliant. But that's, that's a... Um, that's awesome to have that built in. Yeah, and this this was the one that allowed you, that actually extended your desktop to one of the HDMI outputs too. So yeah, you're so essentially HDMI getting HDMI and SDI extra. has extended desktop. Yeah, as well. Yeah, and as there's the... second second HDMI for the key, fee, uh, key and fill. Yeah, so interesting that they actually were able to I don't mute. Know how they, they were able to mute the um, uh, the key and fill. So it seems like what they do is while you're kind of scrolling things wrong, the idea is that you keep the key on on your switcher. Mm -hmm. So they just mute the output, and then right when it yeah. wants to come up, it's it fully transparent. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, it's an interesting workflow, that's for sure. 
Uh, I'm not sure that I would run run it that way. I would probably run the fill and key into inputs on the switcher and then selectively turn that on and off myself. But but this is kind of designed to go as part of your output output uh, signal chain. So yeah, interesting. But the uh, the monitor sure. route is always on though. So if you're happy right. an operator, they can constantly see what they're doing. Right. Um, yeah, but I guess they said up to eight. Um, uh, eight replays at the same time on the same machine. Mm -hmm. Now I'm guessing we'll have to see. I mean, he was running on that on an M, maybe an M3 Mac Mini, uh, which was ten. I oh, sorry, eight. Uh, ten eighty. Was he on a Mac? Was he on? Was he on a Mac Mini or was it? A, was that an iMac? Sorry, I didn't pay close attention. Um, so that would be yeah. Yeah. A, either an M1 or an M3 base model. Yeah, not, not, yeah, almost, almost certainly an M3. Which is really impressive. Yeah. Like to be able to get 10, uh, 8, um, 60 frames at HD feeds at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because the, was... the, hyper, the, hyper, the HyperDex are doing the, the work there, doing the conversion in that case. So... Well, they're doing the yeah. yeah they're they're encoding the the video, but I guess that mm -hmm. converter also has a ten gig Ethernet, so that becomes a um, ten gig dongle for your laptop. Right, so that can go into the right. cloud pod, which is nice. Right. Um, now, I'd be interested to hear from some EBS operators what they think about this because it's such a different <laughs> workflow from what they well, used to. Uh, probably aren't going to be happy because it's going to threaten some of their jobs. <laughs> um, well, because. But... I, I was kind of I, I kind of zoned out for the again I was working on the on the stream at that point but the fact that this all ends up in a timeline is really interesting mm -hmm. because then the post people even working on it at the same time with um, cloud uh, can then grab those replays and just drop them into another timeline and it's all happening live mm -hmm. and I guess you could have yeah the editors multiple yeah, replay yeah. operators all operating on the one project with the, the things yeah, and, coming alive. Grant also mentioned that this is kind of ideal for creating social media clips as well, which is, yeah. which is true. You know, like, so whoever's doing your replay, they're very often tasked with coming up with highlight reels and pulling something from social media right out of there. It makes a lot of sense. So I guess you could have, yeah, the replay operator in the cut page and then your socials person in the edit page. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. because all that footage lives, lives on the network, they, they, they don't even, they don't have to be on, it can yeah. be on multiple computers and it just just sort of works so and those timeline those like blips would all pop up as as markers mm -hmm. so look it's i'm not mad about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's for sure uh it's it is a different approach to what we've seen from replay oh, uh, with other solutions for sure so but in true black version, they're been... just gonna go that's the norm let's just not <laughs> do that yeah so <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if this ca catches on or not. Uh, yeah. if anybody who does the traditional replay workflow is probably not going to like this that much. But anybody who's not done those things that way, they're going to be excited by this. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like an EBS operator is going to go, no, nah, I have no idea what's going on here. This is this is not my thing. Right. But like you say, for the <laughs> um, being able to do those live have... socials, yeah. that's huge. Right. For the people who have come from the ATEM mini world, right? So. Yeah. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love this. And there was a firmware update for. I'm trying. Been trying to find it in my notes. A firmware update for the Atrium Extreme ISO, which helps with the replay stuff. I guess that's just taking those that footage and putting it, making it available on the network. Is that, is that what that was? And also, yeah. also it's a firmware update for the Television Studio HD8 ISO as well. Yeah, I, it kind of skimmed over that, but it sounds like they're trying to push. I don't know if they're doing the ISOs, like all eight ISOs into a, a cloud pod because there's only a one gig connection. So that's not going to be fast enough, is it, for, or maybe uh, it is. Tough to say. Yeah, because they're, they're MPEG-4s, so yeah, it's they're 60, pretty compressed. 60 meg files. Yeah, I guess it could saturate a one gig. Um, but yeah, having Hyperdex going straight to a NAS, having... ISO models going into a hyperdeck. Yeah. Oh, into a, a, well, there's, there's, he didn't really specify, but there's also the USB-C port on there, which could be five, 10 gig easy. Yes. So 
Um, so, but there's just so many unknowns. <laughs> just they they didn't get, they didn't have time to go into details on a lot of this stuff. So some of it's just speculation, and some of it's like wait and wait and see. Honestly, that stream could have been a five-hour stream. Like there was so much yeah. that got missed. Yeah. Um, for sure. But they, but they did spend a lot of time on the replay functionality. Oh, um, after the quick pace of everything else, I was shocked how how slow he was going with the replay stuff. Yeah, I mean. Resolve is definitely his baby. I, I, I know he loves that thing. Um, mm -hmm. So for four camera workflow, I need four HyperDev recordings into the Blackmagic Cloud and being output via the media player. So yes, I think if you want ProRes, you would need that. But it sounds like we might be able to do that with the ISO. So say if you have an SDI ISO Extreme or a Pro ISO, in theory, you could have your ISOs just being piped as a H.264 straight into your NAS, which is... In theory, yeah. Again, for socials and stuff, that's brilliant. Because mm -hmm. people can be, you can be doing a concert event and the editors are just watching it happen and go drag, drag, and just like, it's just there. He didn't mention vertical support though. So, uh, you know, how well is that going to work for social if you don't have vertical? Well, you, you know, you just got to put it sideways. <laughs> is, that's isn't right. That how it works? <laughs> that's, yeah, or rotate it on your desk, you know. Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. it doesn't catch fire. <laughs> Oh, we, we both completely missed uh, um, <laughs> April April Fools this year. When it happened, I'm like, oh no, yeah. I, 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 I ran out of time. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, gosh, where to next? There's so many things. This yeah. could be a five hour um, stream. Did we miss anything else with Resolve Replay 2110? Now, obviously, there's a whole video on the like new AI Resolve stuff, which I was kind of watching with one eye and there seems to be some mm -hmm. very cool stuff especially in the audio department being able to mm -hmm. i noticed there was a like a music track there and they use mm -hmm. ai to bring down the drums or bring up the bass and reduce the vocals like take out the vocals and that vocals was very because when you have just a single like mono vocal with no effects that's super easy to get rid of but this was like a very echoey i was hearing it in stereo vocal which was gone i was like that's properly impressive yeah yeah it's kind of the holy grail when it comes to audio editing right like being able to pull things out of a fully complete mix yep and do interesting stuff with it yeah that's well I mean, even last year in AB, the mind. i was editing my um floor content in resolve and i just put on the noise removal and there were speakers pointing at me blasting audio and all you can hear is just the two microphones it just sounds like mm -hmm. we're in a quiet room like this is insane mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it's, um, we've seen huge strides in that arena in the last couple of, couple of years, so that's really exciting. And fortunately, it's it's coming to most of the products in the video world. It isn't just the Resolve and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff for sure. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that video again. Just like I say, I was I was uh, troubleshooting Zoom issues. <laughs> uh, um, that was. I guess the other thing we saw on. next was the Cloud Store Max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's actually two two different products, not just one. Yes. So the forty eight so, and the twenty four. Twenty four yep. terabytes. Yep. Ah, that's where I saw the L hundred gig port. Yes. Um, which doesn't help in a empty point of view, but being well, able today. to go into a. <laughs> well, yeah. It, what, it, what, what do you bet they're going to have twenty one ten support on those things before too long? <laughs> how? Like what would? I mean, I, I record, record direct from camera, my camera sporting 2110 right into the cloud store. So I'm already seeing that with some of their cameras, but not using 2110, but uncompressed video in real time going into your, your cloud store. I mean, I wouldn't say no, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was eight uh, M.2s. No, sorry, 12 M.2s in a RAID 0. <laughs> Uh -huh. So uh, make sure you've got a backup, <laughs> I guess is all I'll say. Because <laughs> exactly. those who don't know, if you lose one of them, you lose everything. You're dead. <laughs> yep. Everything. Everything. All gone. Because <laughs> Bye -bye. you're not going to... Having having one twelfth of your data missing, effectively means all your data is gone. So. Yeah, it, it's gone. It's, it's gone. Um, yeah, it's not like, you're, not like you lose one frame out of 12 and... <laughs> fake it yeah it doesn't work that way 
uh, Cans asking, would that small hyperdeck big enough? In theory, all of the hyperdecks now would yeah. be fine for this. Yeah. Um, so if you get a HDMI workflow using the... Um, all the current ones, anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, because it's, it's not having to do much, by the way, of additional processing. It's just taking whatever it's st uh, sending to the disk yes. and sending it over the network. So... 100%. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal for it to do that. Glad that's coming. Glad that's happening. I've got a whole bunch of the hyperdecks that, that are going get to get that firmware update here real soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I might actually finally invest in a cloud store, which I had not done up to this point. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we at, at our office, we've got a QNAP NAS, I think. So I'd be curious mm -hmm. just to try pushing it to that to see if it's fast enough to do so. Um, but we also have editors that are editing off that. So that's something to consider is since there's no buffer, if you're recording to that NAS and there is something that chokes on the, either the disk or the network, you could lose your file in theory. Well, sorry, I don't know if you lose your file, but you definitely would start dropping frames and potentially it would cut out at some point. So definitely keep an eye on the record light, make sure it's still on. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So. Um, where to next? Is it, is it camera time? Well, he, 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 had, he did one more, talked about one more thing before he got to cameras. Uh, this one was rather interesting. I'm not sure I, I understood where he's coming from. He talked about rental licenses for, for, for yes. software. So I think, I think he was talking about that for Resolve, as in like the studio, Resolve Studio. Right, but it, it's only $295 to buy outright. So I'm wondering what that license model looks like. I mean, that's, well, it's, 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 I mean, it's... Two hundred ninety-five can, can be a lot for some people. I get that, but it's also the cheapest you're gonna get for any software, anything like it, as well. Already, yep. I, I'm I'm just looking at loading up Logic, Logic Cloud now to see if that um uh, has popped up. Oh yeah, it's there now. So let's see what they give us now, because I'm sure their poor website's getting attacked by everyone right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. But for no, no, no. now, that's an interesting point for large colleges and things like that, because then you have a license which you can then push on to new students and things like that. Um, if they're on their devices, so they come in and that's a good point. Uh, but also yeah, for a, a, time or yeah. a live event where you have a whole bunch of editors, you just bring on. I don't know what the pricing will be for for that. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about that is, I mean, you've got the free version of Resolve, which does like ninety percent of what the what Studio does anyway. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't. I, I, don't think like I, would have, live... I would have ever seen this coming. So, <laughs> it's, it's it's an odd odd uh, odd choice in my, in my mind. All right, let's so. have a look. So licenses. Uh, let's they also the license. give away Resolve Studio with a lot of purchases too. Okay, so sixty Australian per month for a Resolve license. That's, I think our Australian price for a full license is five, four, eight, uh, four fifty or so. Okay. So it's about so eight, eight months. You, you, if you're doing less than eight months and you know, yeah, you're never going to need it after that. Then you save you some money there. But yeah, I think I do like the idea of like moving it between people. Yeah. Um, because. Which actually makes sense because if you got uh, a bunch of editors who only do things temporarily, then you can kind of go, hey, here's your license for that job that I'm assigning to you. Um, yeah. Which in theory would also match up with all the, the cloud stuff too. So I guess it actually it, it makes sense. But even just from a license yeah, management I, point of view. From a few, from a few, for a few situations, I can see it making sense. I, I guess part of that comes back to though, how does the existing license, a studio license work? Is it, are you licensed, is it, is it licensed to an individual or is it licensed to a computer? Computer, so, so that's the issue we've got at our office at the moment. So we actually might, I don't know if we can assign a license into the cloud. So, cause we've got a whole bunch of cards from cameras we've bought mm -hmm. um, and we've kind of gone, we have to be careful about which um, camera we push this to. I'm oh, sorry, which computer we put this on because we have, you know, a whole bunch of iMacs in our office. So this actually might, be useful to be able to push it into the cloud and kind of go, cool, someone's sitting at this desk and they need to edit so they can now grab that license mm -hmm. and use it. So if it's a license management portal, I can see that being very useful. 
Interesting. Yeah. Because you can't actually, once you've loaded your license onto your Resolve on your computer, you can't actually see what that license was. So I right. just loaded one on my computer, but I don't actually know which one I, I did. So it's, yeah. um, yeah, anyway, well, let's do they, do they still that. do they, they still do the dongles for, uh, for you studio can still or buy is that dongles. A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the way I've actually done it. Like, I have a couple of dongles and like, I just moved the dongle to whatever computer I happen to need it on. But then that's a USB thing, and then you lose it, and then it's yeah. like... <laughs> and it's not USB-C, so you need a converter on kind of computers that use USB-C. And... Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, along with that, they also announced licensing for organizations too, which belongs uh, same part or same sort of idea, I guess. So. Yeah. The other way it may sound like is, is more for larger companies where you want a variable number of seats. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. All right. Doesn't, doesn't impact me, but you know, I'm sure there's people out there who can use that. Hundred percent. Okay. All right. So then we get into one of their biggest announcements: uh, their new cameras. In more ways so, than one. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Uh... So I don't know if anyone saw the on social. Someone put up a photo of the billboard of the Ursa sitting on the side of the billboard. Um, so that kind of got leaked a little bit early, but, um, mm. yeah, we've got a new 12 K camera and yes. it's, full frame. it's full frame <laughs> and fuller frame, like uh 70 mil yeah. as well for the, <laughs> the other option. Yeah. 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 Now I, as a, as a DP Spoiler. myself, this is something that I'm, um, I'm pretty excited about and watching the, the demo footage that they shot there. The dynamic range and stuff they were getting out of this, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see some like studio proper daylight environments and just see skin tones because skin tones is the, the biggest thing. Is how, how can you accurately rep represent that? Um, mm -hmm. But the fact that we've now got... The storage is an interesting thing, but I, I guess when we're talking this kind of data rate and stuff, you really do need a solid storage option. It's like right, SD cards right. are yeah, it's... For anybody who didn't see the stream, they're introducing a new media module, which has was it four uh, M.2 drives in it. Is that what, is that what they um, Probably in RAID 0 as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, again, yeah. Was... It's four, four, four M.2 drives in, used internally. Uh, each one gets uh, four PCI lanes for a total of 16 PCI Express lanes. Is that how that works? Uh, but that gives you the bandwidth you need to... Uh, gives you the bandwidth you need in order to handle this 12K footage. Uh, coming off the camera, yeah. Um, so, variable different frame rates from, I assume, twenty four at the low end. They, I, they didn't explicitly say up to one hundred and eighty, depending on what resolution you're shooting. Uh, in twelve K mode, but different different vertical resolutions. You can do eight, uh, twelve by eight, twelve by six, twelve by five, and one other one. I was I couldn't get to. I was writing. I was having yeah. to write too fast. <laughs> Here we go. So um, we've got um, basically twenty four to two twenty. And 220 okay. is at 8K resolution, which is okay. impressive by itself. Yeah, yeah. And then it has a, a mode where you can shoot 9K with Super 35 size. Yeah. So crop at the sensor. Yeah, so here's the module. Um, how fast is this module? Yeah, having 10 gig on the actual um, camera too. I'm not mm -hmm. mad about it. Yeah, 10 gig connection. I wish yep, it was yep. at Ethicon, but... <laughs> they apparently just don't believe in Ithacon. I don't know what it is about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that extra 50 cents is just too much for them, so. Okay. Uh, I've, I've bought a couple recently. They're actually quite expensive. The, the, um, well, when the you, when you and I buy them in retail, yes, they are quite a bit more expensive. But at the scale they're doing it, I'm sure they're only spending 50 cents more on each one. <laughs> oh, they, the, the 6A Ethicons are like $30. They're, they're not cheap. But anyway, <laughs> that, that's, that's, a whole, that's a whole other thing. But um, <laughs> oh, hey, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So let's do a 12K open gate because, you know, we're cool like that. Constant quality, mm -hmm. uh, constant bit rate at 18 to 1. 1. 1.4 hours on a 1 terabyte and 200 mega second. Their compression is pretty good. Not going to lie. Not that it's a traditional Blackmagic RAW, which has always been pretty good. So Yeah, I've, I've always loved the Blackmagic RAW. They've done a really good job of that. Yeah. And yeah having the docking station, which is quite expensive, but... Yeah. Inter inter interestingly expensive for what it is, because, I mean, it's not really doing any processing. It's just a... 
Although, did, didn't he say... Oh, okay, yeah. So I think it was four M.2s in there, all running four lanes of PCI, so mm -hmm. a total of 16. Correct. So yeah. in yeah. theory, it's acting as a RAID controller? Mm -hmm. well, it's I don't know if that's going to be in the... More like GBOT, I would guess. Uh, I guess, it, yeah, it depends on if it's been striped or if it's um just, yeah, JBOD. I would, so, I would assume, I mean, if, if we're doing it for performance, it's going to be striped. So Yeah, so there has to yeah. be some sort of ray controller in there somewhere. So either it's in the camera slash dock or in the... Um, and Wi-Fi built in, that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Not the having camera. to yeah. plug in a thing. So on set, you can set up a Wi-Fi access point to uh, get the proxies up to the cloud. Love it. Right, yep. Um, I do actually want to do some playing with that. And yeah, USB for your phone. Um, I know I've got some clients looking to do that to just have a phone. And plug also in. USB for the viewfinder, which, which is new. They've not done that in yeah. the past. Um, yeah. So when I saw the, the thing on the billboard, I saw the USB port and I was like, are they going to give us motors for focus and zoom and stuff like that? Because I thought that's what that might have been for. Um, mm -hmm. But no, viewfinder. And mm -hmm. being a normal Makes USB-C... Makes me wonder if it's a USB data connection or whether they're using a USB alt mode like for HDMI or DisplayPort or something like that. So you could actually use a different device if you wanted. Don't know. Yeah, that, that that's a good question because if it's a weird protocol, like non-standard, then if someone was to plug in a phone into that port, then that's potentially mm -hmm. dangerous. Mm -hmm. Um I'd imagine they use the, they probably use the standard signal lines just to non-standard encoding True. but yeah, yeah. we don't we don't know yeah i mean the smart thing would have been to have it you be USB C alt mode and do either display port or hdmi for uh, yeah but who knows we don't know we don't know yet your wi-fi won't won't love you if you start uploading mass amounts of data but it does do that um uh the proxies on there so that is definitely makes that more doable. And that's kind of become standard for most of their cameras in, 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 the, in the recent past. We're yep. doing proxy as well as the raw, yeah. And the proxy, is, super the quality is not bad either. Like you could easily right. upload that if you needed to for a, you know, a news thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, so 12 gig SDI out, uh, so. Two of them? Yeah, uh, yep, so, but that means 4K. So shooting in 12K, but you're not getting anything more than 4K out of the camera for live. Uh, no 12, no SDI input, so no camera control. <laughs> so I was, ah, uh, although. <laughs> I know it's killing you. <laughs> it's killing me, but do they have the REST API protocol, which they put onto the other cameras? I so think they actually you... mentioned, I think you actually mentioned that, yeah. Um, now, you might be able to get iris control, although they took away the lens port, um, which is uh, they took away the one they've used in the past, but they actually have a Wemo port on it. He did mention that too. So yeah, so it's more got an external Wemo port. Yeah. I don't know if that can break out to a lens cable. I don't know if I. Oh, he, he, he explicitly mentioned lens control from the Wemo. So yeah, so it's got. Um, yeah. I can't remember what was on that pin. Um, it's like the RS uh, three pin Fisher. That's standard um, for power and runtime, but. Mm -hmm. And yeah, price wise, yeah, obviously, 15... obviously a signal, signal of like start, stop, record. Um, yep. Yep. And all, all, all that standard stuff. So 14995 on the price for the, so by the way, the name of the Blackmagic Ursa Cine LAF, Cine LF, or 12, 12K LF or whatever. So oh, it's, the, the, the name, name on the website the didn't say there. that. Yeah. They, they did in the slides in the presentation, but oh. on the website, they're not showing that. So. Okay. Maybe Blackmagic is going to shorten the name of something for the first time ever. I believe in miracles. It's possible. There we go. <laughs> uh, also, yes, it's supporting um, SRT. So having built yes. in encoder, which yeah, in theory could go to a um, uh, streaming bridge. Streaming bridge, yep. Yeah. Um, or, or, or the switchers, or the, like the television yeah. studio. Yep. Uh, HDA uh, camera sports. Although I'm guessing. ISO sports that, yeah. Uh, which was what they did with the 12K. 
the original 12k is no painting which infuriates mm. me um <laughs> because especially with this ha having wi-fi built in you could put a teradec mm. transmitter on the back have wi-fi mm. for camera control um going to a streaming bridge um and just set the bit rate to one kilobyte. It doesn't matter. Like you, you don't care about the video for the SRT <laughs> side. You just want it just for the camera control. Um, mm. I've been playing with that a little bit and it would work, but not Have we seen the any evidence that it, the camera has a color corrector in, in, inside of it at all? <sighs> it didn't say anything, but again, I'm definitely going to ask the question. And if I don't have it, I'm <laughs> going to have words. Um, but it comes <laughs> with a Pelican case. Like, it looks like a true Pelican, which yeah. is nice. I was, yeah, water is going to be some crappy Chinese. Yeah, thing. so a, a package that includes a road case, eight terabyte media, a battery yep. plate, uh, um, top handle, the fifteen mil top rail, uh, the base plate with the nineteen inch. They have a fifteen inch model as well. Apparently, uh, it comes with the PL and EF mounts. Mm -hmm. um, the the standard battery plate's a B mount, which is interesting. Um, now, does it run on 12 volts? Uh, I don't know. There on the, on the screen, it said 24, 24 volt power supply. So, so I think the native power connection is 24. Yeah, but will it run on a V mount or a gold mount? That's going to be an interesting question to ask. I, I think you mentioned the option for uh, different types of battery plates. Yeah. So I assume that gold, gold mount's an option too. It, yeah, it just Definitely, definitely supports V. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, having to swap everything to twenty-four volt batteries is oh, that's fun. Um, would be a a welcome wallet with a QR code to software download. Yeah, I'm glad they put that in there. But right. it seems pretty obvious, though. Just looking at what they're where they're going with this, this is really intended to be for cinema production. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and, I know I and, get mad about it going. Why is this not in live? Because. I'm weird like that. And I love using cinema cameras in live because it just looks beautiful. Um, yeah. But also requires cars, you have very competent camera operators. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, look, I, yeah. I do steady cam with uh, super 35 at fully open with doing my own focus. So it's still, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Someone like you can handle it. But, yeah, <laughs> I, I can, I can tell you that a lot of the camera operators I, I hire would never be able to handle a camera, camera like this. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> Yeah, for budget reasons, you know, you, the camera operators you can hire for three or four hundred dollars a day, they're not going to be the ones that can handle a camera like this. So that's a good point. Um, Two hundred fifty watts uh, power supply is included, so you're probably going to be through chewing through batteries pretty quickly on this thing. Yep, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, without a, without a doubt. And yeah, micro so. OLED um, viewfinder, bunch of extra buttons as well, which is nice. nice. Um, adapters for sure. all that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's very much the standard what we're seeing on most other cameras now with the 15 mil rods and stuff like that, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, and the uh, the future 70 mil as well. That's going to be yeah. something else. <laughs> 17, 17K. So if you, for anybody who didn't watch it, they announced the 17K version of this camera. Uh, he technically called it a 65 millimeter, um, close enough to 70, right? Uh, yeah, so the, on that 50.8 the... by 23.6 millimeters, so bigger than full frame. Uh, I'm and actually curious what So uh, the Alexa 65 is a 54 by 25 mil. So it's okay, a bit so that smaller one's a little than Alexa 65. Than yeah. Um, but the fact that we can actually buy, well, soon, um, buy a 65 mil camera because you can't actually buy the Lexus 65. That's rent only. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty yeah. cool. We, yeah, we don't know the price of it. We don't know exactly when it's going to ship. Um, uses either a Hasselblad or a PL mount. So you're not going to be doing your EF lenses on this camera. Um, oh, so USB C display port on the drawing. I'm not sure if you saw that somewhere in the oh, interesting. thing. Um, oh, interesting. Someone in the okay. comments has said that. So could that mean okay. that that could plug into a, a screen with USB-C or something? Yeah, that should mean that. Yeah. Yep. 
uh, whether it supports HDMI or not is another another question. But DisplayPort, yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of monitors out there just support DisplayPort. So, yeah. I mean, if someone's using DisplayPort on set, then I've got questions. But that's... Or, uh, like I mentioned in my Mac video a few weeks ago, there are active converters that will convert from DisplayPort to HDMI, which are pretty inexpensive. So, it's even if it actually... didn't support HDMI, you convert you convert convert pretty easily. I don't know what it is about your videos, but I typically don't have issues until I watch you you making a video about <laughs> issues, and then I start having those issues. I'm like, have you just jinxed me by by these videos? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, but I've been having those problems all along since the M1 came out. My, I've got an M1 Mac Mini that's sitting over here on the desk, which, which is what I'm using for the Zoom ISO. Yeah. And it's been a massive headache trying to get HDMI out of the thing into a video production. And it works great with monitors, but you're trying to get into a video production system, and it's just been a, a, just a nightmare. Yeah. So. Um. So what else did we? Oh, the the Pixar. We got a new Pixis, name. Pixar. Yeah. Yes, so they had introduced a new product line, the Blackmagic Pixis 6K Cinema Camera, which seems like it's a slightly upgraded version of the Cinema 6K camera that they introduced a few mm. months back. And I know and a I lot of people on the internet will be very excited about this. They've finally got a block camera, and I hope mm -hmm. you're excited. <laughs> but uh, I know for me personally, I do not like block cameras. I hate having to build cameras. <laughs> I want to just pull a camera out of the case, Put on a lens and put on a battery and hit record. Yeah, I don't so want you'll, to you'll have to build your own custom case then. So. Well, but it, yeah, it, it, especially as a Steadicam operator, it infuriates me because because um, you got things like the the Reds, the uh, Alexa Minis, and things like that. You know, great cameras, but the fact that we have to pull all these things on it ends up being heavier than the <laughs> the big body version, right, and right. also more like more vibrations, more things, which is um, makes a big difference in um, Steadicam land. But anyway. Not to mention, in a lot of cases, you end up with a cable nightmare getting everything connected and wired in in uh -huh. order to make it all work. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So look, I mean, it's it's not bad by any means. I, I, I personally was not looking for a box, but I know a lot of people are, and a lot of people will be yeah. happy. Um, well, there are a lot of people who don't take that pocket camera of form factor seriously. You know, you show up on set with one of those, it, it, it doesn't communicate the same level of professionalism that a box camera does. So yeah. I know there's been a lot of people who've been reluctant to use the Blackmagic pocket cameras specifically yep. for that reason. Yeah. So this yeah, is a, a step in the right direction for that. Yeah. Although for me, it's like, I'm, I'm glad there is a monitor on there, but you don't have to have mm -hmm. an external monitor to run the thing. Like most reds is mm -hmm. you have to have a screen to actually use the camera. <laughs> Which and is yeah, yeah. an absolute pain. And usually, usually one of theirs too, right? So. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. being able to actually use the camera by itself, that's a check mark for me. <laughs> that's a, I never thought I'd yeah. have to actually, you know, say that's a thing, but... Um, yeah. It's still surprising to me, though, that, they, that Blackmagic, being a company that's so invested in broadcast, it did not make more concessions for broadcast use for, for camera like this. Well, because so. I would... So we've got a, a studio, like a green screen studio. I've been wanting a 6K. Um, so they released the 4K micro studio. I've been wanting a 6K micro mm -hmm. studio because I just want to bolt the thing to the wall and just call it a day because the shot mm -hmm. doesn't really change. I don't, I don't need the big right. verses and stuff. Um, right. So if this had the camera control and the painting on there, then great. I, I could use that for a bolt on the wall camera, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, it's not meant for that. And what I don't understand, now, I do actually want to scroll down to the bottom and find out if you can buy the lens mount separately because I don't know why they've released three different models and not just um, uh, Yeah, that was surprising. They, they, they got to the end of the announcement and basically said, yeah, there's three versions of this camera, one that's uh, uh, EF mount, one that's PL mount. Is, is the main one L mount? Yeah, it's L mount. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which, which is what they did on the Cinema 6K. So I'm glad uh, they've still got EF and PL because L mount mm -hmm. is, I mean, all my lenses are EF and PL. So, um, yeah. yeah, hardly anything on L mount. Yeah, that's that's. I think they did that so they would have a more universal way to convert to other yes other mounts because there and aren't like, that many L mount lenses out there yet. Yeah, and it's definitely the right way to do it. Um, but what I don't understand is I see four screws there, and they mm -hmm. all look exactly the same size. So why not make it an interchangeable lens mount? Like, what's uh, what's going on there? That, that 
Uh, doesn't make I don't have an answer for you on that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Why? It, it doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, cause, I mean, because they've done that in the past. Like a lot of the yeah. cameras have been interchangeable mounts. Because I've got a so, whole bunch of their Ursas and I swap out mm -hmm. lens mounts all the time. It's brilliant. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a chance that they may actually release the lens mounts. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd I'd, I'd uh, put my money on it because since they have the different versions of the camera. So um, oh. Nigel's saying that uh, releasing all three is kind of silly because you can do an L to any adapter. Yes, that is true. I don't know what the you adapters get all the cost. same functionality though. Uh, so anytime yeah, you do a conversion a from yeah. one 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 one's mount to another, you lose something, and it's just inevitable. Yeah. Even if even if the thing you lose is only performance like how fast the autofocus is or something like that on the, on the lenses that support that but there's, there's always something you always lose something yeah. in the conversion so yeah so like it's definitely nice to have i i know you were saying that you've had a friends who have had issues with the 6k sensor um mm -hmm. i haven't actually used this one yet so i'm definitely keen to try it on the on the show floor yeah. um but We've seen this a number of times from Blackmagic. They introduce a new camera. There's an issue with the sensor out of the gate, and then they get them corrected eventually. But like for the first little while after a camera comes out, they have some, whether it's so, firmware so to, or... Nice, nice work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but then inevitably, they'll get it fixed. But like very, we've seen it a number of times where they introduce a new product, and it's not performing up to expectations initially. So... In the long term, I don't I don't worry about it, but for anybody who's an early adopter, there could be some growing pains for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, and obviously all the Blackmagic Cloud stuff built in as well. Yeah, um, but the Ethernet on this one's only one gig. It doesn't do ten gig. So. Yes. So no twenty one ten. Sadly. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. No twenty one ten. Um, copying raw is going to be slower than it would be with a with a ten gig. Uh, proxies will, will, should be fine. Yeah. Uh, RTMP slash SRT streaming. Yeah, did they, streaming bridge with did they actually say SRT? Uh, he did not explicitly say that. Um, I'm guessing that because that's the way they've been moving with that in the last year or so. And most of their products uh, that support the streaming support SRT now. So just an assumption on my part. Okay, so it does have the rest camera control over Ethernet for this yeah it doesn't say anything about well sorry i haven't read this i haven't read this yet but yeah I, I, I would be, i'd be surprised if it supported the the painting features yeah me um, too if it does support it though because what price was this again that was this one was 2995, 2995. for this camera and let's get the pl and it's 3195 hmm. so yeah it's great price for what the camera is no question yeah, yeah. I do wonder actually if you plugged in a USB to five gig or a ten gig um, Ethernet, would you get faster out of that? It's, it depends if their OS has support for a driver for that or not. I mean, it, they're doing the pocket, so I'm guessing they wouldn't have yeah. different drivers. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, the growing pains with the Cinema 6K has been a learning experience, but I think I'm understanding it better. Yeah, that's the thing. It's every everything. Yeah, that, that, that's the friend that I mentioned is having having trouble with it from my friend. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Question: Which one would you purchase, the EF, the um, PL, or L? Yeah, that's going to vary based on what lenses somebody's got. Like personally, I don't yeah. own any PL lenses, but I've got a whole pile of EF. So for me, it'd be a, yeah. very natural to get to get EF. But for but somebody who works L, in you can convert to those old two, so it's yeah, that is true. That is true. So, yeah. question is how good how good the conversion is. Um, and mm. Paul, if you're still if you're still watching, how was your uh, L to EF adapter worked for you? I know he yeah, bought one. Please, but, please let us know. So, yeah, curious to hear. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's your availability. Haven't... Yeah, what? Well, yeah, that's what they say. But in black, black magic, that probably means more like September, October, November. It's the way that it um, almost always goes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a reseller here in Australia, um, and it's always fun. Oh, you, to look you, the get, website. you get early access. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's more on the website. They'll say expected late J June, and then late mm -hmm. September, and then late October, right. and then late. <laughs> it just keeps getting right. pushed back and back. Right. 
yeah like last last year when they introduced uh the new uh 80 by 80 video hub that one was supposed to come out in june i think or something like that and it didn't ship till december so it's yeah. just normal for their products to take for, take longer than they expect yeah and and now doesn't mean now and now means within the next couple of months you'll actually be able to get your hands on one so. mm. anyway I mean, uh, we may have we may have beat that one to death yeah yeah so um, next thing they announced was the Resolve Micro Color Panel. Um, yeah, which is great. So this, which they, he, had, he announced as a way to control the iPad, but obviously going to work with Windows oh. and Mac as well. So it uh, had three trackballs for doing color control, color adjustments. Um, Just notice the, um, the, the old micro is gone. So this is a replacement for it then. It, it's a significantly lower price if I remember right. Yeah, because the other one was around. It's like a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the new yeah, because because I I have that old one which had no screens. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they've replaced it entirely. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, it's interesting. He said four nine five for the price on the stream, but the website showing five oh nine. Is that, is that Australian dollars uh, no, or is that US? This is dot, dot com, so this should be the. Okay, that's the US price. Discrepancies in there. In yes. The... Well, with as many products as they introduced today, I'm <laughs> not shocked that there's something that's not not lining up between the website and and, yeah, uh, exactly. and the announcement. So. Yeah. Now the question is, what um, what firmwares have been released so far? So we've got Resolve Beta One is now available. Um, A10 switcher, which in, supports the 2ME and 4ME 4K, so it typically means that's in stock. Uh, you're seeing stuff that I'm not. Like I, I'm on their website and viewing the same page, and it's not showing the same thing. Okay, well, okay. I'm, yeah, in, yeah, I'm in Australia, so it's like it's it's shorter for yeah, me to go to Melbourne than it is for you. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it takes it takes longer to get here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I did re I did a full refresh, and it's showing up now. So ATEM update, updates available. Let's see if the HyperDeck, okay, HyperDeck so updates a, available. Is it? Yep, Ooh. HyperDeck 8.4. Yep, I know what I'll be doing soon. Um, the Ultra yep, Studio 4K <laughs> Mini gets the uh, update for live keying and mutes on outputs. Um, that's cool. HyperDeck 8.4, so that includes network record and playback network secure option https ntp growing files but no um oh, okay that's interesting so the 4k studio pro adds support for internal cache so if you're worried about recording to a network drive um, you Maybe. might want to look at a 4K Pro for that cache. Um, which... Where, uh, wait a minute. Does it, does it have, have space for one that we just never knew about? Well, I don't know if that's using the SD or SSD in the front, but did, did the original HyperDeck What's it? Pro have so... a... M.2 in there? Not, not the Pro. Uh, no. So the Extremes, they've they've had the Extremes had the uh, M.2 expansion in the bottom for caching. Uh, that's, they've never said anything previously about the the Studio line having any sort of caching. So I'll have to rip mine out of my rack and <laughs> pull it apart and see if there's. Oh, do you have a 4K Pro? Do you? I do. Yeah, I have a 4K Pro. Yeah, I I bought it for primarily so I can do Alpha. Alpha key on for play, video playback because I'm because my switcher doesn't support the uh, 4K 60, but that's the only model in the studio line that will do key and fill with uh, 4K. So I bought one just for that reason. Uh, yeah, I might have to it's, pull that out of the really? rack and see. Yeah, yeah. I the the plus done that. Or the, the HD Pro um, it'll play back 4K but not Alpha, so. Right. I have one of those as well. I have one of those as well. Okay. I thought I'd done it before, <laughs> yeah. but maybe I haven't. Um, yeah. Yeah, it does it for, yeah, it'll do it for HD, but you go up to 4K and you lose the, the, uh, the fill and key. 
capability. Okay, there you go. Learn so, something every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I would have been glad to spend a thousand instead of seventeen hundred <laughs> or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I don't understand how this is still a thing. I know. Seriously, <laughs> like, why? Why has the Smart View monitor not been updated? Especially they, now they just dropped the price of the um, of these uh, video assists. The video assists, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, going to have a conversation with some of the people. Like, I would spend <laughs> I would spend two thousand dollars and like even if it's double the price, like you know, two of them put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even better, re release a version that doesn't have the recording features. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Take, take it out. Price. We don't need it. Yeah, I, I don't need I don't need recording in a rack mount monitor. So because like that price is twelve sixty five. No recording. It's got horrible screens. Mm -hmm. And if you did say two twelve Gs with no recording, I mean, I don't know what they've got going on there, but it doesn't seem like that should be yeah, hard to do. Yeah. That that might be their oldest product in their lineup at this point, the, the smart view and smart oh, monitor. Here's the question. Have we lost now the original gray ATEMs? Yep. I would gone. assume so. Yeah. It's I would gone. assume so. Yeah. Yeah. So we've finally gone to all black apart from uh, yeah, this the, guy. The, uh, <laughs> the, the new 4Ks announced today are direct replacements for the, for the two that remained. So let's see. What well, although saying. actually the, the broadcast studio, that was a, that was a up upgraded product compared to the production studio because it did 4k Correct. 60 so I actually uh, I had, had a client some... who I bought one for and it's for me and it was four a 2ME. Well. yeah and the yeah. firmware made it a 4me which is actually awesome right. um right. so I was actually looking at our the the reseller stock I oh, sorry the distributor stock and there's still like 16 of them in the country <laughs> so I'm like good luck getting rid of those <laughs> <laughs> um well it, 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 it would provide a very unique, they don't have an exact replacement for that. It's like, there's no other product that's four Emmys at 4K at that price point. So, yes, yes. So chat, let us know what you're most excited about. What's, what's the bit that you're either going to buy, you really want, you really can't afford, which is me for all of them, but that's, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to know what, uh, I'd love to know what yeah. you've got there because so Doug yeah what are you pulling the card out today for and uh and and getting if anything uh tough to say um the new switchers are intriguing to me um most because I do like to shoot 4k you know yep. and I always feel I always feel like uh I'm short shorting myself short changing myself when I'm buy any sort of HD only equipment. But that said, none of my clients ask for 4K, so I'm able to get by with the HD stuff just fine. So there's no compelling need for me to make that upgrade. Uh, for my trailer, I'm still, I think I'm still probably gonna get the 4K 4ME constellation uh, instead of just getting the 2ME, which is a direct replacement for the switcher I'm currently using. Yep. So, uh, but the 120, um, uh, video hub that's intriguing that's interesting mm -hmm. um especially whoops especially because um it's not that much more money than the 80 by 80 so yeah. interesting uh the 2110 stuff mm -hmm. the, now that they're supporting 4k that's a lot more intri intriguing than the older hd only and over so, a 10 gig connection too mm -hmm, yeah exactly uh, so I could replace my current studio converter slash uh, camera converter stuff with 2110, reuse my existing fiber cables for that and get, get 4k functionality that I've never had just because this the camera converter never supported that. So it's a big, it would be a big investment because, you know, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting the, one of the eight by converters at a minimum and so would then, you do one on each side one on your trailer one on the on the field i don't know um because if, if i want to include intercom it was one of the reasons i've used those products in the past that i haven't included intercom uh, that i would have to have the 
the little the small box at the camera. Uh, so you know what is fun actually? Um, you could do all eight cameras over a single strand of fiber. Yeah. Because you just do multiple wavelengths of a 10 gig SFP. Right. And put in a multiplexer and, oh, that's nice. But it's, yeah, no, not necessary in my case because, you know, the fiber trunk that I use is 24 strands. So I've yep. got plenty of, plenty of uh, fiber available. It, uh, it is one thing though. So I've, I've, I've used the same thing, like the 12 multi NTP connectors and then it's been mm -hmm. great. But what I've found is a lot of venues don't have the um, the ability to run a cable from the stage to the uh, where control is, mm -hmm. um, but they have a couple of LCs kicking around. So yeah, um, yeah, it can make that work. Yeah. That would actually be interesting in terms of a yeah a stage box option. Yeah, with, <laughs> yeah, that means you're investing in. Uh, the proper multiplexers and compatible SFPs, which are not they're not they're not really going to be expensive because they're network instead of video grade. Yeah, so exactly. A lot so it'd be yeah. it'd be relatively cheap because you can get um, even a, even by dies as well. So you can get multi wavelength mm -hmm. by dies, mm -hmm. um, and a yeah CWPM that would. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely do the math on that because that could be an interesting, like, because that could be a good start into 2110 as I like, use that mm -hmm. as a stage box, for example, and then just kind of go, I've got this as a stage box, but down the track, right. you just go, cool, I'm just going right. to plug it into another thing. My, my big concern with that whole thing, though, is the latency. Um, the stuff I use right now, there's zero latency for the fiber conversions. Yeah. And if we go to 2110, I, well, I assume that they're going to come up with some improvements on that, but right now, you know, it looks like most of their stuff is currently two and a half, three frames. Yeah, wait and no, see, which is it's a lot. A yeah, that's a lot. So, I mean, hopefully, we'll be surprised and we'll look at it on the show floor and be like, it's down to nothing. Because I, I saw Redell <laughs> did a video um, showing off their twenty one ten. They're like, yeah, it's yeah, and a couple of lines. It can be, it can be, yeah, it can be. Just it depends on the implementation. There's no inherent reason that twenty one ten has to have a long latency. Just uh, variations in the very individual products. So, all right. Uh, so, looking at the looking at chat, we've got people are looking forward to. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Happy birthday! <laughs> this is a pretty good birthday present. Going going broke yeah. buying all this equipment. Um, yeah. Still waiting the Rackmat 12G multi viewer. Don't we mm. have that? It's 6G. Oh, how about the new one? Is that 12G as well? Multiview? They have oh, sorry, sorry. I was them. thinking just a physical new, new screen. New multi yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah the, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Using the EPF as an external for monitor for a laptop would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be Actually, fun. you know what? That's not entirely a dumb idea. Because if you've got, <laughs> say, a... Um, a laptop or something as an encoder in a backpack or something being able right. to just plug in a little viewfinder and see that's it's not not a crazy idea uh yeah. micro yeah. panel um perfect but we need more ip connections the atem more than seven nine i want to see what you're doing to have more than seven seven to nine but i guess the micro panel is nice because if you already have an atem software open you're not using any more connections um and i wonder if you could put mo multiple micro panels in a computer hmm interesting a lot of the, a lot of those limitations are very on, based on atem model of atem yes. though like yeah. the higher end ones will, hand, will handle more so yeah. i don't actually know what the constellation ones are so i don't either I i've never I've never run ones. into the limitation <laughs> so um interested in interoperability of the ip10 codec and the existing uhg 2110 yeah, yeah probably that's... Probably not going to happen, honestly. Because <laughs> yeah, if you're talking into any sort of existing um, IP system, I I want to be wrong, but we'll see. Yeah, um, and the fact that they introduced their own proprietary codec basically means that not, it's not going to work with anybody else's stuff. 
one of the best flat view videos. You don't need to multiplex optics. Um, this is true. Uh, uh, well, kind, kind, kind of. of. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Um, hang on. So the IP... Sorry, I'm just checking the... Um... So what I'm talking about there is the... Uh, so for example, the 2110 8x12G, that's got eight 10 gig SFP ports rather than a single uh, 100 mm -hmm. gig. So you would have to do some multiplexing kind of thing for that if you right. wanted to right. go along those lines. Yeah, because it's a one-to-one -one mapping, right? It, one of the one SFP port goes to one pair of uh, SDI connections. Yeah. Uh... With the exception of the return video. Return video, you can have a single single return feed that goes to all the cameras. So I, I guess mention that. if that's the case then, because it is IP, so I guess my question is, um, if I bring that back up again, uh, out in and out one and two, one and one, does that only go out port one, or is it just network and it can come out any port? That's I would guess for I would guess for bandwidth reasons it could could only come out of one port. But if you, uh, if you're shooting HD, perhaps. Well, no, sorry. If if you had five the eight things plugged in, but you have one cable connected between two of these. You only got to do one at a time, but could you only do one at a time and set different outputs? Obviously, yeah. Bandwidth wise, you can only fit one. Don't but know. Don't know. That'd be interesting to know. Um, so Sam saying, uh, would you need the, the converter with the headphone option for communication? What cameras do you use? Um, couldn't you use the Blackmagic Studio cameras and not need those? Yeah. So if you're using a non Blackmagic camera and you're using the um, essentially channels 15 and 16 on your SDI, which I guess you could right. just embed anyway. Is that what you're doing? You're just embedding on 15 and 16 for... Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Yeah, so um, I use, in my case, I use the existing studio converter product. It's got an AES in, and I just uh, got Dante to AES, and that goes up over fiber channel, and it's SDI channels 15, 16 for, for comms. Yep. yep. Nice. So, um, but going back to the question though, uh, so these devices are for non-black magic cameras uh, in that case, because you know, with the, the firmware update, the new 4K, 6K Pro are going to support 2110 natively. So, uh, well, in, in the cameras that have those IP, so I've, I've got a bunch of Ursas mm -hmm. and Pockets, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to use, I, right. I would be able to use these by dies because I could put an Ursa right. into that. So that right. is definitely an option. But again, I think latency is going to be the king. If latency is at zero, then this is definitely a viable thing for me. But right. if it's not that, yeah, yeah. But if it's if it's three frames, that's kind, that is kind of a deal killer for me. And I suspect probably you too. Yeah, exactly. Um, Keenan wants the uh, the Pixis. Is that is that how they said it? Pixis PL. Yeah. I have to get used used to another weird name. Um, or a bunch of lenses. That's great. Uh, as long as it supports multiple Bluetooth connections, it probably will. Yeah, I, it, it'd be nice if it does, because that'd be great to have a couple of panels in front of people that need it. Um, oh, Marco's saying we have two panels, two CCUs, one tally interface, one to two PC softwares, APCR, um, and one companion server. Yeah, okay, that's, that's a, a decent amount. Love to see that setup. That looks awesome. Um, Twenty one ten stuff for me is very interesting. To uh, we'd love to s make these devices IPMX capable to make them more versatile. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's literally just maps, maybe in software. I'm surprised nobody said NDI. It should be NDI. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Um, yeah, look, I, we've always said this. I don't think NDI is ever going to happen in Black Magic World, but no, no, I, no, 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 no. That's the licenses are too expensive. They would, they would never pay for it. So, but the funny thing is, though, is that NDI is currently winning in terms of latency versus twenty one ten in this <laughs> scenario. That's more a matter of maturity than anything else, I'm sure. So. Yeah. 
NDI full frame is apparently a dying breed. I don't know if... I, well... So for me, HX, the latency is too high. It's the same problem. Um, I was on a... Quite a quality last two. No, some quality last yeah. HX. Uh, I was on a job recently. We're doing downhill mountain biking and we have guys going, you know, 60 miles an hour past the camera and I was doing pan tilt cameras from the truck. So by the time I see them enter the frame, I was using HX1 um, going... It was funny. So it was Canon uh, N700 cameras, IP straight out of that, fiber down to the base, went to a Magewell converter went SDI into a IP2110 truck and then went to our monitors. So we went from NDI <laughs> to SDI to IP to, I guess, HDMI, my monitor. So it was just all the conversions. Um, but I had to watch so closely because as soon as I saw them enter the frame, I had to press the button to go because otherwise they were gone. Like, and that was only three, four frames worth of delay, but it was... It's enough. It's enough to cause an issue for that. Um, yep. that I wish it was full NDI because the latency on that is a lot better. Um, but yeah, there's still some, but it's much better. Yeah, latency decode, decode cycles take too long on HX. I agree. It's just yeah. I think yeah. Uh, it's, NDI it's, it's not meant for a live production. I mean, depends who you ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, NDI, NDI fanboys are going to say it's more flexible. Exactly. That's, Dante AB. That's more. That comes down to more a misunderstanding of how. 2110 works and anything else. 2110 ultimately is going to have a lot more capabilities. So. 100%. Dante AV, tough to say. We don't know. We don't know yet. Um, For me, it's too expensive. Like all yeah. the converters cost a lot of money. It's, um, I want it to work because then you could talk with Dante and everything, all happy family and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, most converters are like $3,000 starting there. Yeah. And that's, a lot of money. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they will definitely have to fix that before it's going to catch on. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the big thing 2110 hasn't going for it is the licensing cost is basically zero. So yeah. Um, even bird dogs move away from full frame. Um, the announcements today were HX only. Oh, I haven't actually seen what the bird dog announcements were. Um, that's really interesting. And, yeah, I, I know how I know how you feel about bird dog products too. So. <laughs> I know I shouldn't badmouth a fellow Australian company, but um, <laughs> I'm sorry. But make something that works. And I know we're talking about Black Magic here, and some would say that I should be talking about them too. But... Yeah, depending depending on how you ask, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. yeah. This has been fun. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had no idea we had so many products incoming. That was. Uh, Definitely felt bombarded there for the first, what, hour of the stream? And just new product every two minutes or however that worked out. I think they're going to so. need uh, a bigger booth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to need a bigger booth. <laughs> we're going to need a bigger so. booth. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely a lot to see. Uh, I, did, did you uh, get scheduled with uh, Blackmagic to, to talk to one of their reps? Uh, yes, I've um, okay. been chatting with some on the Monday, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I am, I am as well. So but I didn't know same... that it was going to be so exciting. So that, this, that, that, that meeting is going to be a lot more interesting than I had anticipated it might be. Exactly, exactly. Uh, actually, for, for the viewers here, what do you want to see from NAB? So I've got, a, I've got my little backpack packed and ready to go with the camera. So if you want to see any particular products, let us know because we'll be around with cameras and hopefully making some content. So... Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this will definitely be the last stream before NAB. So this is the last chance to get get your uh, get your vote in for what you want <laughs> us to see, see us cover. So. Oh, so you haven't seen the announcement in length yet because it's your birthday. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but I thought this this was your birthday present. This is what what more could you want? <laughs> yeah. Definitely the biggest birthday present Black Magic, Black Magic has ever given. That's for sure. So. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, any other last questions popping in? Uh, otherwise, uh, no. I mean, that's that's basically it wrap the, this up. So, from the chat point of view, um, yeah, Doug, thanks for joining. Um, when you texted me going, "Hey, thanks do you want to do this together?" I'm like, 
that makes a whole bunch of sense because um yeah yeah otherwise otherwise we're competing against each other and there's no need to do that so. <laughs> Yeah, this will get uh, you in front of more eyeballs on my channel and vice versa. So yeah, like, likewise, uh, make sure you subscribe to the the other thing and yep. all that fun stuff. Both so. ways. Yeah. So of all the people who are doing uh, this sort of content on YouTube, Ryan is the most like my channel of any that are out there. So and likewise. Yep. <laughs> right back at you. So yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see some of you at NAB. Um, there's a Dougie going to the uh, the meetup on yep. the Monday. Yeah, Monday at four o'clock. Yeah. Monday four o'clock yeah. at the front in probably one of the tents. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet, but we'll we'll find yeah. a table there's, there just to chill at. There's a Facebook group for uh, any, for yeah. more information on that. Um, I'll let's get that linked. Yeah, check my right. Facebook or Zeppin's Facebook. Um, that should all be there. It's it's very very chill, but we just want to hang out and have a good chat. That's yeah. we did we did it last There's year. No 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 agenda. We just sit around and talk to each other for a while. We so, just talk shop yeah. and uh, spend way too much money. It's great. Yeah. So, a lot cool. of fun. Well, yeah, I mean, if, you, if you, you in... guys are at NAB and, and see see any see me, come and say hi. I'm sure Ryan would say Likewise, the same thing. Yeah. Just uh, it's always nice to meet the people who are watching the channel, and put faces to names, and. 100%. We see names with them, fly so. out through the chat and we're like, oh, yeah, that, that's you. That's, yeah, it's really mm -hmm. good. Yep. Um, have a link to throw up his channel, Doug. Um, oh, sorry, I thought that was for Doug's channel. Uh, we can put in each other's links into yep. each other's chats, but yeah. Yeah, so mine is uh, youtube.com slash at DJP underscore video. Yep, and I'll just put that into my chat. So make sure you subscribe there, and I'll put it into Doug's chat also, which I think is that one. Anyway, yeah. Cool. It's now uh, six twelve a.m., so it's a bit more of a reasonable time. <laughs> but uh, oh no, time to finally up. wake up. Yeah, it's time to wake so. up. My uh, daughter will wake up soon, I'm sure. So um, I'll have to deal with yeah. all that and jump on a plane in about 12, 11 hours time. So fine. And yeah. deal it's with only a five a, hour uh, drive for me. So, so I, I'm, I'm not even driving down until Sunday afternoon. So, <laughs> yep. so I'll make sure to get all the goss on the, on the Sunday then. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, thanks Doug. This Alrighty. Okay. Yeah. Thanks Ryan. Thanks for joining. I think this is, this is probably the first time you've actually been on my channel directly, isn't it? So yeah, you and yeah. I have interacted quite a lot, but, but I think we, it's we should we should do this more actually. often. This is um this is been sure, fun. for sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that would be that would be awesome. So, all right, alrighty. So thanks everybody for watching, and um, yeah, uh, we'll see you at NAB if you happen to be there. Awesome. Bye. Alrighty. Thanks.